Welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about some insight I guess I gained after running a kind of an impromptu game at GaryCon. Kind of about the process of creating an adventure. Now, we've talked about that before on this channel. I often say things like, well, you see a movie you like, you see a book you like, you read a comic book, you see a piece of art. These things can inspire ideas for adventures because adventures are really just a set of circumstances or locations that exist, right? And the player characters with some motivation are there to do something, whatever that might be. And <laughs> as vague as that might be, that's basically what it is, right? You're going to prompt them into doing something. Sometimes it could be as simple as a quest giver, right? Saying, hey, could you do this for me? Sometimes it might be something really in the character's backstory or something very obvious, like there's a bunch of raiders, bandits raiding the town that you're in and you kind of fight them off. These various things can lead to adventures based on what the PCs want to do or ultimately what the players want to do, right? So during GaryCon, a friend of mine asked me to run a game for him and I didn't really have anything prepared. So I did something that, well, I first learned of this from Frank Menzner years ago at GaryCon. He ran a game like this, but it really comes from Tim Kask, who runs something called the Wheel of Blame. If you've heard of this, let me know in the comments below. Tim Kask is great. If you don't know who Kim, Tim Kask is, I'll put a link to uh, their website, their uh, YouTube channel, as it would be. Um, and you could also just Google it. He is, uh, I think, I might be off here, but I'm pretty sure he was the first uh, TSR employee. He's was with the game early on, basically, and is just seems to have amazing information when you follow his channel. Really fun stuff. Anyways, um, so he runs this thing called Wheel of Blame. And what he does is he has each of the players write a couple of things down on an index card, and then he takes them all together and creates an adventure with it. Now, I did this not exactly the way he does, based on a player who was in my game and who has played with him. What he does is he takes the index card that has two things on it, he creates a scene, and then he goes to the next index card and works his way around. That's not really what I did. What I did was I had everybody write on these little scraps of paper stuff, one or two things uh, on each piece. I kind of scattered them in front of me. I picked one to start with and we just rolled from there. As I picked one up, I just kept adding it to a continuous story. And that's how Frank Menster did it when we ran, except he took all the papers from us, sent us away for 20 minutes, built an adventure, and then we came back and played. I did it more impromptu. It's really fun. It's a fun thing to do with your friends, a good challenge. But what it made me realize was a lot of times when we create adventures, we're kind of just doing that, right? We go to, we're thinking about something, we're staring at that blank computer screen or that blank paper and we're thinking, uh, and we open up the, the Tome of Adventure Design or, which is amazing, I'll put the link. I don't, I don't know if that's out of print. I'll put the link to it if I can find it in the description. Or we go to the various online generators, which is what I'm going to use today when we talk about this, and we get a bunch of random things, really, right? And then we start to form an idea. And this has become even more obvious to me that I work this way or that it's a fun way to work in my Dungeon 23. If you don't know what Dungeon 23 is, it's basically this prompt that you're supposed to create one room a day for your dungeon. And then ultimately you end up with 12 levels of a dungeon, a bunch of rooms. But what I, the way I've been doing it is I create the contents of the room and then I'm doing all the mapping at the end of the week because I feel like by doing that, I can put it together in a cohesive way and it won't seem so random even though it is, because I'm rolling everything randomly. So let's break this down a little bit. First, I'm going to talk about what I did at uh, Gary Khan. You'll see kind of how the process works. And then I'm going to jump online and I'm going to show you some generators and maybe we'll get a list together and we can start to create something together, possibly over on the Discord. Okay, so I went back through these and I put them in the order that I ended up using them. This is not the order they were given to me. This is kind of how the adventure worked out. I'm not going to be that guy that explains for an hour how my adventure went, but I just want to kind of walk through how I did it. So this first one says volcano and lightning. I thought that was a good prompt to start with. I decided that the party was, you know, heading towards this, basically this volcano area, this, these towns around this volcano in search of a wizard. And they could see from the distance there was this lightning gathering around the volcano, but it was like on the volcano and then occasionally shooting upwards, which was a little odd. And as they were moving towards this uh, this volcano, there, you know, there's lots of people in the, basically moving towards a mountain, right? So there's lots of people in the shadow of the mountain, as it would be. And they're running, right? They're leaving. They're leaving their homes. They're leaving all their stuff because they don't know what's going to happen. Maybe it's going to erupt. So the party kind of walks into this thing like they're going one way, everybody else is going the other way, right? And the next thing I pick up is Steakhouse Minotaurs. Now... <laughs> running kind of wanting to run something that was a little gonzo and weird. I decided that 
this one of the peasants that's leaving is trying to sell off all this meat that they have from their their steakhouse because it's going to rot, obviously, while they're on the road. And they see the party going that way. And they're just like, hey, you're adventurers. Do you need some meat? And they <laughs> they trick the party on some level. Uh, or who knows if they're tricking them. And they say, this steak right here is from Minotaur. And it'll give you special magical powers if you cook it in a very special way. And so the party trades with them and gets this Minotaur meat. It did become a, a thing. So, But we'll get into that maybe another time. So they got that. And they were heading towards this place. Now, the next prompt I had was... Ice portal, mother spider. So I thought, instead of just having an ice portal in the side of the mountain, which would be weird enough, I decided to make it dry ice because I wanted to make it kind of interesting. So I, I talked about how they could see this, the, the, the steam coming off it. It wasn't wet. There was like steam coming off it. I gave the magic users a chance to roll to see if they knew anything about this. They did not. <laughs> so, you know, and of course the players were good about not using meta knowledge. And I mentioned how when they stepped into it, like their torches were flickering and almost going out and that people were having trouble breathing. The ones who didn't have the magic minotaur meat that was, because not everybody ate it, of course. Then they were able to work their way through this. So it was basically a challenge, right? So this is from Ice Portal. They get to a giant door that they've got to get through. And here I started mixing it up. I didn't use both things from one card. Uh, they listened at the door. They failed the listen check. So one of the party members just rips the doors open and what's on the other side, but carnivorous flies. It's a trap, right? I make them roll saving throws. If they fail, they get caught in this rash. You know, flies just come flying out. They, everybody gets caught in them. But if they fail their saving throws, they can't kind of fend them off and they're getting bitten by the flies and they take a bunch of damage as the flies kind of move their way out. Okay. And then once they get past that, they look in and they see a giant cavern and they can see all these spider webs hanging everywhere, right? Here's our mother spider. And there they are, right? They're going to cross this rope bridge. And of course, a couple characters went out there first. And if, now when they step out, they smell the fresh air. So of course, not only uh, is it dangerous and scary, but they also don't want to be in that ice cave because they're losing their breath in there and everything, right? So they, they, they go out onto this bridge and they get attacked by a giant spider. Now, the next one I got was kind of a funny thing. This, this to me says, orcs, druidicious. Druidicious. I think is what it says. And I thought one of the players that was next to me was the one that wrote it, because he was kind of a funny guy. But is this your thing? It's just druidless. He's like, no, I didn't write that, but that's what it says. So the next scene was orcs basically basting and cooking over large fire a druid, because druids are druidalicious. And that became a whole funny thing. Ultimately, it saved the druid, who was a gardener and uh, planted crops and all kinds of herbs and stuff to make pickles, which was on the next list. And followed by an encounter with the displacer beast that I created inside a weird cave with like mirrors and stuff. So it'd make it even more difficult. They finally make through it. And this one says art music, I guess, but it said art mosaic in my mind. So they finally make their way through this maze and they find this insects, which is a wizard who's an insect and a bug, a bug wizard. And he's looking at a mosaic and on the mosaic is a mile high black obelisk. He turns to the party. They have a conversation. He can help them find the thing they're looking for. But first he needs his special staff that's gone missing, the golden staff. And we'll pick up the rest next time, right? That's basically how I ran it. And that was about a two-hour adventure. We threw it together again. And what this was is just a series of prompts. Any one of these, any one of these prompts could be an adventure. Sticking them all together creates kind of a gonzo adventure. I could have cleaned it up a lot more, right? I could have, if I had sat down with these, if somebody had given to me them on the beginning of the con, if I said, hey, everybody, give me two things on Thursday, because we did it on Saturday, and they all gave me a list. I could have sat down and spread them out, made it work, and you know, but we were just doing it off the fly, and it was kind of a fun after-dinner thing. But how does this help us in our regular creation, I guess, is what we want to look at today. How can we use random prompts to create a story that has some cohesion, that is fun, and that all kinds of connects together? This is kind of our goal here. We are constantly, if we're DMs and we're running a campaign, we're constantly having to create various situations and places where the party goes to encounter various things. And when they do, they moves on. And hopefully as time goes on, a campaign kind of grows on its own and things start to make sense and they connect because you introduce the NPC here that then becomes a quest later. And this is kind of how campaigns grow, right? But especially at the beginning, when you're throwing out all those breadcrumbs to see where they're going to go in a sandbox campaign, sometimes it's nice to have some random inspiration to create stuff. So what I want to do now is jump onto a couple of online generators, just in case you don't have a group of friends that are just going to give you a bunch of ideas. And let's see what we can find. Here's some homework for you, though, first. Ask all your players in the next game that you run to write a couple things down on a piece of paper. 
take those things back and try to incorporate them into your next adventure. They don't all have to be together. It doesn't have to be the whole bulk of the adventure, but start to put these little elements in. See how the players writing an oddball thing on a paper like Golden Staff can create an entire adventure. It's a fun challenge and I'm gonna start doing it more and more myself. But let's jump onto my computer here, my iPad that is, and we'll look at a couple of random generated sites and we'll create kind of a little bit of a plot line, at least the rough outline of it. Maybe together we can create an adventure. Okay, so as mentioned, I've jumped onto my iPad here. Uh, this is Don John, one of my favorite places to go for this kind of stuff. If this is, we're going to use this mostly because I feel like this ties together, but there's a couple of places I want to show you guys first. There's this over here. And again, I will put a link in the description below. This is on Total Party Kill, um, random dungeon with, you put in a number of rooms. Let's say we want 12 rooms. And what we get here is a bunch of things here. And you know, Fungus farm, undead farmers, zombies shuffling, mushrooms studded like a butterfly collection, but not of butterflies. You know, so what does that mean? You can kind of put it together. So if you want a little bit of weirdness, I use this one as a special weird <laughs> when I do my dungeon, my mega dungeon. I basically, if I roll a weird on my table, I come here, roll one of these, and I just figure out why there's a spyglass with amber glasses, shows the netherworld, and I just make it work, right? Then Jen is this other one that I like here. This is from Workborg, actually, but it's really fun. Basically, you get this the ziggurat of pain. It's still active. Lethal mechanism is about to activate. A vengeful cabal of undead porcelain dolls, right? And then you seek bronze golem, which knows the way to he. But obviously, you can make that whatever you want. That's your quest goal. But what if you don't want that quest goal? You just click on it. Drunken boredom and stupid bet. That's how you're here, right? Uh, eyes of an icon have been stolen by thieves that dwell here. So, okay. So now, let's say you, you take that. You like that. Oh, eyes of an icon that you know, stolen by a thief dwell here. So now it's like you need these eyes for something else, right? You can kind of tie this into your campaign. This is a really fun one and really weird as well. But like I said, I'm going to stick with Don John, which is my one of my favorites. There's a lot of stuff going on here. You can do tons of stuff. I'm just going to look at the fantasy generator. Let's see what we can create here. So I'm going to hit the random generator, and we can see that we have lots of stuff. We have quests here, which will give us a quest. Let me get some dice. Okay, so these tables all give us like D10s, right? So let's just go down the list and see what we might want to use. So I'm going to refresh this, and we've got 10 quests. I'm going to roll a D10. Four. A wealthy elven lady named... Fenadale seeks a company of adventurers to escort a group of pilgrims safely to the village of Cowold. And again, we don't need to use, we could always pick whichever one we want, but I'm just going to take these things and see what we can get. Paste that one there. Again, I'm in my iPad. Let's go to the next one. We've got random locations. Let's choose, let's say, a D6 random locations. Three. All right, so we're going to take three random locations. Let's generate. Uh, we've got anywhere. Let me see what we got here. In dungeon, in town, in wilderness. No, let's do anywhere. So generate. We're going to take three of these. So 10. Somewhere amidst towering peaks, a stone bridge crosses a raging river nearby. That's a good one. Two. A narrow corridor on the eighth level of, of the prison of Ajax, the gruesome. Several square holes are cut into the walls here. Okay, very cool. And our third location. I roll 10 again. I'm just going to roll again. Five. A large room on the eighth level dungeon of Sinister Evil. Oh, oh, a young blue dragon. That's interesting. Okay. Obviously, these are just prompts. If you're creating this for like a second or third level party, you might not want to do eighth level of a dungeon and you might want no one to do a dragon, but you might. You know, maybe there's a pathway that gets them to this eighth level and it's very, very dangerous and they have to not really explore much, just go where they need to go. And maybe the blue dragon is not going to necessarily be a combatant, but somebody they can get advice from. Again, we're using this as a prompt. Okay, so let's go with random encounters. Here we go. This could be fun. So let's say, this is a one shot, so let's do five encounters. They might not encounter all of them. And again, we can combine them with other things. So let's take five of these. Three, a recently constructed stone wall conceals a slumbering white dragon. Okay, that could be interesting. One, Iron Golem glowing with heat surrounded by an aura of flames. That could be interesting, especially with White Dragon. Rolled one again. Six, an undead eaten skeleton stands guard over an empty hole in the floor. If you remember, there was some holes in that other uh, selection. Nine, 
A ghost of a female dwarf cleric haunts this place. She attacks anything which approaches her holy symbol. Okay, interesting. And we'll do one more. Well, I've rolled one again. Oh, a lot of ones. Glad I'm not playing a game right now. Uh, suddenly, oh, here we go. Temperature suddenly drops noticeably. Okay, so now we have some encounters, right? Okay, so I did all dungeon encounters. I didn't really realize I was in dungeons. So let me actually swap this out here. And let's go in the wilderness, because some of the stuff is going to be uh, in the wilderness. Let's take two here, and we'll swap out two. Uh, one, a group of elven pilgrims. Okay. Oh, oh escorted by a pair of uh, golems. That's interesting. And let's go four. A bear balances upon a large rock, tracing arcane symbols in the air with its paws. Okay, also interesting. So now we've got, and again, what we could do here is use these random. You could put them into the whole thing. You could use some of these, like the female dwarf cleric, the ghost, could be an outdoor encounter, same as the uh, the temperature. So really, we're good there. I'm not going to delete anything. We'll leave this all for now to give our mind something to work with, right? Okay, let's jump over now and see what else we have. Those are random encounters. Uh, let's do like a couple of NPCs as well. Let's go. Oh, okay, here we go. Default culture. That's probably like your general Western D&D culture. Yeah, let's stick with that. Uh, any gender, any race, any class is fine with me. So let's generate and let's take two NPCs. Number three, male halfling peasant. And nine, female halfling arist aristocrat. Okay, so that could actually be aristocrat. I say aristocrats like the, uh, the Disney movie. <laughs> I probably did. All right, so those are NPCs. And again, we can crank through as much or little of this as we want. Let's do a couple more things. We've got, let's see, art objects, legendary weapons, ancient tomes. Let's pick one of those. I'm going to roll a d6 to see which one. Okay, ancient tomes. We'll do one of these. Three. The sublime librum of Atun, a set of scrolls bound by fine chain. It once belonged to the renowned conjurer, Elamelin, boy, I'm not good at pronouncing names, who fell in the Crown Wars. Okay, that's cool. This is a uh, tome. And, you know, good weapons and stuff are also cool, but this, this is cool. We'll do, stick with the tome. Uh, we don't need pickpocket loot, giant's bag. You know what? Let's give a setting. Let's say one of these, right? Probably not going to be world or planes. One, two, three for this. Five of them, so I'm going to roll a d4. And we're not going to deal with worlds and planes, I think, in this one. Although that could be really fun. Two. Towns and cities. Uh, default culture. Any size, any race. Let's just do one of these. We're going to do 10. I'll generate some. Uh, population 3,400. Mostly dwarf. Oh, look at that. For the, uh, you know, the dwarf with the holy symbol. This could all tie in together. Again, we got to start thinking about how we can put this together. Let's see our brains working here. Sometimes when I'm doing this, at a certain point, I'll just stop because I'll be like, I got it. And it's there. But, you know, just because we're going to keep this going. We also have coats of arms, dungeon graffiti, omens, importance, prophecies, and secret doors. I don't, again, I don't think secret doors is going to be that useful to us. So I'll roll a d4. Three, we'll take two of these. So that's going to be an omen. And the other one's going to be a coat of arms. We'll see how that works out. Let's do coat of arms first. Potent, a rondel azure. You know what? I don't think we're going to use coats of arms for this. Let's do, uh, <laughs> let's do either Dungeon Graffiti or Prophecies for the other one. Uh, I'm going to go with Dungeon Graffiti. All right, so we'll do that one first. Nine. Uh, an arrow pointing left. Okay, interesting. Do one omen. Five. The flame of a candle burns blue. So we have a lot of stuff to work with here. I didn't, I didn't count them all up, but we've got a whole bunch of things here. I'm just going to quickly organize this and we'll jump right back and talk about it. Okay, so I'm, I've neatened this up a little bit and I realized that the quest, a wealthy elven lady named Fendale seeks a company of adventurers to escort a group of pilgrims safely to the village of Kaworld. That's fine, but I feel like this might be one of those, that's the idea, right? Like you think that's the, the concept, like they're, okay, we're going to escort these people. But then they need to find something along the way that will, or something needs to happen along the way that will then prompt a different quest, right? And this could be any number of things. You could leave it open-ended. But if we're going to have all these things, we could have any of these encounters prompt or any of these NPCs prompt another quest. We can see a few things already tie together. The ghost of the female dwarf cleric haunts this place, attacks anything which approaches her holy symbol. We also have 
the uh, the town, which is mostly dwarf, right? So this could be one of those situations where somehow there's a connection here, and maybe they need that holy symbol even though she's protecting it, or maybe they go to find, come to this town. Maybe we switch this town's name to the other town that they were sending people to, right? And maybe when they get there, they find out that this ghost that protects this holy symbol that creates the protection for the whole town, you know, has been either dispelled or possibly they found some, uh, you know, dead or wounded or whatever people that around where the ghost holy symbol normally is, but the symbol's missing. And now the party has to go find it, right? There's all these different things that we could do just tied into that one idea and these other things coming together. We also have this whole thing going on with the dragons, right? We have a white dragon and a blue dragon. That could be some kind of a connection. So we can really start to shift this into a cohesive story if we want, uh, adding and subtracting as we want. Okay, so what I want to do here is, I mean, I've thrown on some prompts for you. I've kind of given you the idea of how we can do this. Whether you've never created an adventure before, or you've been a dungeon master or game master for many, many years or somewhere in between, take some of these prompts, create a little bit of an adventure with it. And if you want to, go ahead over to my Discord server and share it in the running games room. I'll make a thread over there and we'll see what people come up with. I would love to see these mini adventures that people create. Let's create a several adventures off these same prompts just to show how every one of us has a different approach to these things. Could be any level you want, any system you want, any time frame you want to do it in modern spy, go for it. <laughs> Although it might not work quite as well. But who knows, right? What I'm going to do is whip this together into a PDF. I'm going to put a link to it in the description below, right? So you got two pieces of homework here. Go to your group and ask them for prompts. If you are a player and you're playing in a group, maybe ask the DM if they'd be willing to do that. Have everybody give just one or two basic things written down on an index card to the game master and let them think about it and try to incorporate it into their game. It gives you that little extra flavor. If you're a DM, obviously, just ask your group. Also, if you'd like, download, again, these prompts. I'm going to have this all put together uh, with the PDF. Download them, put something together, like a one-page dungeon style, and uh, go ahead and post it over on my Discord server so we can have a conversation about them. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you liked it, please do hit like. Go ahead, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring the bell so you get notifications. I do videos like this every week. Uh, also, check out the description below. You're going to find a link to this PDF of the stuff I just put together so you guys can create your own adventure, a link to the Discord server so you can hopefully post it over there, and also a link to my Patreon if you want to support the channel. I'd appreciate that. I'll talk to you soon.